Hello guys, this is Adrald in episode 4 of Thermal Expansion from Scratch. In this episode I'm gonna cover a lot of things, so let's get started. To begin with, I want to take a closer look at the Crescent Hammer. This is an item that can be used for many things, uh, the first of which would be to rotate vanilla chests, as well as strong boxes and levers, and it can also be used for example, if I have a strong box and I put some items in it, I can shift right click the strong box with a wrench and the items will actually be saved in the strong box and if I shift while hovering over it, it's going to show me what it has. And if I place it down again, I can uh, access the inventory. E and that works the same with portable tanks. I can put some water in here and then shift right click it with a crescent hammer and then it's gonna tell me how much liquid it has and I can place it again and it will have the same amount of liquid. Uh, the, cres the crescent hammer can also be used to rotate machines uh, like the energy cell or even some of the uh, industrial machines but not all of them. So you can rotate them. So a very handy tool overall. Thermal expansion adds strong boxes which are a new way to store items. They work similarly to chests, but there are different tiers with different capacities and they have security features, so let's check them out. Uh, the first tier is the strong box, which has a storage capacity of 18 slots, and then each subsequent tier has 18 more slots, so the hardened strong box has 36, the reinforced strong box has 54 slots, and finally the resonant strong box has a total capacity of 72 slots. Um, then there's the creative strong box that is only meant for players in creative mode or admins and you can when you put an item in it you can basically take uh, when you left click on the item you will take a copy of that item exactly as it is and you can take as many as you want out of it so this is obviously meant for uh, administrators or creative views uh, so let's check the security features of this chest We've got the security tab that you can open and you have remotes. Public access means that anyone on a multiplayer server will be able to access it. Uh, owner only means only you will be able to access it. And finally restricted mode means that uh, you can have a wide list of people that are able to interact with this block. So to access the wide list you can type this command COFH friend GUI and here you get the friends list and you can add people. If I wanted to add, for example, I don't know, um, Jeb to my whitelist, I just type the name and click the plus and if I want to remove someone from my uh, whitelist, I just type his name and then the option to remove it highlights and I can click on it to remove the person from the list and only the people here uh, will be able to access it. Now you can also type COFH friend add and then a username or remove and then a username to do the same thing as on the GUI. And uh, yeah, those are the strong boxes. Let's now talk about item ducts, which are used to transfer items around. There are two main types, the normal item duct and the impulse item duct. And the impulse item duct is faster at transferring items than the normal one. Now in those two types there are two subtypes, the transparent and the opaque. And the difference between that is that the transparent will allow you to see items going through it and it's also more expensive to make. So now let's see the pipes in action. Let's say you've got two inventories and you want to transfer items between them automatically. Well, you can grab yourself some item ducts and place them between the inventories and they're just easily and automatically gonna connect to each other. Now uh, you can set the uh, inventory you want to extract items from to the output mode and you can change the mode of the pipe with a crescent hammer. So I'm going to right click on this area right here and this is going to change it the symbol to red which means it's now outputting from whichever inventory it's connected to. And you can remember this by uh, simply looking at the shorter side of the symbol and if it po points away from the chest it means it's outputting but if it points into the chest it means it's set to input. Now there's another mode here which is this mode which uh, means basically the pipe is not connected to anything, it's not interacting with any inventories attached to it. 
but I'm just gonna set it to output because I want to get items from this strong box and put them into the network. Uh, now if there is no valid inventory and this is set to output, the when I activate this pipe, which you do with a redstone signal, this is not gonna output anything because what it does is check the network of item dags and see if there's a valid inventory and in this case there isn't one. Uh, same thing is gonna happen if I set it to output mode. It's also not going to be a valid inventory for this chest. Um, but if I change it to input mode and I turn the redstone signal on, then it detects that there's a valid inventory and it's gonna output the items in the network. Now what happens if I output items into the network and then I remove the valid inventory. Well, the items are actually gonna bounce around and they're gonna go back to the initial pipe at which point the pipe is gonna take on this design which is telling you that there's stuffed items inside and the, the pipe will not be able to extract any further items from the inventories it's connected to until the, it finds a valid inventory in the network where it can put the items into. So just like that. Now there's a few more things you can do with, with item decks. Uh, you can install a pneumatic servo and what this is gonna do, you're gonna right click it with the servo on your hand and this is gonna tell you that it's been installed and now you can cl right click it with an empty hand and you're gonna have this interface. And in this interface you can specify um, what kind of items are accepted are taken from the chest as well as the stack size. So you can say how many items at a time you you want to extract from the inventory. Um, how many items at a time the pipe is going to be able to transfer. And you can increase or decrease the stack size by shift left clicking. Uh, that decreases or increases the stack size by 32. You can control click so you increase by 4 or you can simply click to increase or decrease by 1. Uh, so let's set it to 1 and let's put a stack of something and you're gonna see that um, this is gonna extract one at a time instead of the 64 it would normally. Alright, what else can you do? Well, you can specify a white list or black list of items. So let's say I want to only um, be able to extract copper ore of thermal expansion and I'm gonna put it in the white list. So now only the items in this item filter, in these nine slots, will be able to process to be extracted by the pipe. So if I put uh, Florb here and some pneumatic servos and the eggs, they won't be extracted at all because they're not in the white list. However, if I change this to a black list, then it means that any items that are not in these nine slots will be able to um, go into the pipe. Uh, now, what else is there? Okay. Uh, we've got the use metadata option and basically what this does is if you've got a white list and you put an item that's damaged, for example an iron pickaxe, uh, and then you put a full iron pickaxe in here, now what this does at the moment is uh, only accept uh, iron pickaxe that is, that's got a certain metadata. In this case, since it's damaged, it's got a metadata of 1 and since I'm saying use metadata then it won't be able to extract an iron pickaxe that does not have that exact metadata because this one doesn't have uh, has a zero metadata so it doesn't match the one in the filter if I put the same one here it, it will detect it and extract it automatically. Now let's take a look at the last two modes. The next button is the use or dictionary. Basically what this means is if you've got two blocks or items that are the same but they're from different mods, for example, I've got copper ore from thermal expansion and copper ore from industrial craft. Uh, these items are really the same in the forge dictionary, uh, but they don't have the same ID. So what this does is it will match any items that are the same in the forge dictionary. And basically, if I put two copper ores from different mods, both of them will be extracted because they're both uh, marked as copper ore even though they're from different, different mods. Um, finally, we've got the ignore NBT or use NBT mode, which means if you got items, 
that are different even though they have the same item ID but their internal data is different uh, then it will detect that. For example we've got these florps here water and coolant they have the same item ID and I'm gonna say use NBT. So now it will use the internal data to identify this particular floor and it will extract it however if I put a floor that is for another liquid it will not um, it will detect that it's different and it will not extract it. Now if I say ignore NBT then it won't care and it will extract it just fine. And that's the item filter. It's worth noting that item ducts will only extract items from strong boxes uh, where the privacy settings have been set to public access. So right now it's set to public access and item will come out of the chest. However if I set it to restricted they will not and same with owner only. And how does the pipe or the item duct decide where items will go? Well let's see. Let's put two chests at different distances. This one is uh, two blocks from the uh, main chest and this one is three blocks. So if I turn on the thing and set it to public access the items will go to the first to the closest available inventory. Uh, now if I have two empty chests that are at the same distance and I turn the system on the items will be actually um, transferred in a round robber, robin manner so each of the chests will get uh, one item at a time and they will have the same amount of items in the end at the same uh, speed at the same ratio and let's see how to further control where items go now I've got a network here and I've got a couple of chests and if I p equip a crescent hammer and right click on the little square here I can change the mode of pipes. So I can change them to red, dense, uh, green which is vacuum mode and orange which is the round robin mode. Now let's see what this do. Um, the dense mode adds a thousand blocks to the distance of the pipe. So while in, it appears that this chest is the closest available inventory However, since I added the dense pipe, this is actually a thousand blocks further uh, as far as the system is concerned. So when I extract some, uh, some items from here, instead of going to the, um, to the chest here, okay, it's, public access, there you go. Uh, it's actually going to go into this chest because of the dense setting. Now the next setting is the green or vacuum and we're going to actually put it here and this does exactly the opposite of the dense setting. It removes a thousand blocks from the distance. So right now this chest here is closer than this chest here just because of this uh, vacuum setting. And if we put some items in here we're going to see that they're still going to go into the chest over there. And finally the last setting is the round robin setting and it's orange and you can only put it on an extracting pipe and what it does is it doesn't matter where you put chests in the network it's gonna distribute items in a round robin manner so these chests are gonna get one item each um, you know at a time so this is gonna get one stack this is gonna get one stack and then this is gonna get one stack in order and then the whole cycle is gonna start again and they are all going to receive items in the same manner. And one last thing about item dags, they are compatible with Fortune Microblocks so you can get yourself some covers and cover your item dags if you want and you can even block uh, pipe connections with covers or any other microblocks. And those are the item dags. Let's take a look at rock wool. This is a block that looks exactly like wool but it's not burnable. So we've got a column of normal wool to the left and a column of rock wool to the right. Let's see what happens if I set both of these columns on fire. As you can see the column on the left is burning but the column of the right is taking the fire quite nicely. So that's rock wool. The Glowstone Illuminator is Thermal Expansion's version of a lamp with its own unique features. So let's place it in the world and this is what it looks like. By default it's off but it will turn on if you apply a redstone signal to it. You can also change its color by using an ink item 
on it, so blue, red, black, etc. And it has a few different modes that you can switch with a crescent hammer. So let's check them all out. I'm going to right click it and now the default is on. So basically what this means is that the lamp is on while there's no redstone signal applied to it, but it will turn off if you apply one. Next mode is scale proportional. It means that it will turn on and emit light depending on the redstone signal level. So the more, the stronger the redstone signal, the more light it's going to emit. So this is almost the maximum redstone signal and it emits a lot of light. However, if I apply a really weak redstone signal, then it's only going to emit a tiny little bit of light. Uh, the next mode is like this one except opposite. So the stronger the redstone signal, the less light it's going to emit. So as we go from weaker to stronger, it emits more and more light. I mean, uh, from stronger to weaker redstone signal, it emits more and more light. Uh, then the next mode is always off, so it's always off, and it will not turn on, and the next mode is always on. Now, uh, the useful thing about the scaled inverse mode is that if you have a daylight sensor, it will actually detect the light and emit a redstone signal and depending on the light level it's gonna turn on the lamp or not. So right now it's night and the lamp is on but if I turn on the day the lamp turns off automatically because the uh, sensor is emitting a strong signal and since this is uh, inverse scale inverse the stronger the signal the less light it emits. So that's a pretty handy feature. And that's the glowstone illuminator. Finally, let's take a look at the Tesseract. This is this block right here that can transfer items, power and or fluids over long distances without the need to place down conduits or ducts. And this is what it looks like inside. There's a setting here for a number, which is the frequency. Let's set it to 7 with the set frequency button. And then there's a space here for the name of the frequency. So let's name this frequency 7 and we can save it and it's going to appear on the list. And how this item works is that you connect it with another Tesseract by using the frequency number. And when, right, when we right click on the other Tesseract we're going to see the list of frequencies that we've already saved on any Tesseract that we own and we can select it and go ahead and set the frequency. And now these Tesseracts are linked together. And on the configuration tab you can set on the item mode or the fluid mode or the energy mode whether the Tesseract is going to be set to send or receive or both or be blocked of that item. So if you can you can left click to switch between modes and we're going to set this Tesseract for example to send items and this Tesseract here to receive them. So how this works is if I put a chest here with an item duct and I'm going to pump some items into the Tesseract, this one will receive them and it's going to put them into whatever uh, inventory is attached to it or if I have uh, you know, item ducts it will pump them into them but let's just put a chest in there and I'm going to put some items in here and let's turn it on and since the Tesseracts have the same frequency this is sent to send and this is to receive, then this is going to receive the items sent from this Tesseract. You're going to see the items being pumped in and now they go straight into the chest. And this works the same way with fluids and power. So I've got a couple of Tesseracts here and this one is set to frequency 1 and it's sending all and receiving none and this one is set to frequency 1 as well and it's receiving all and sending none. So anything that I pump into here will go into this one. So let's connect some inventories. Like right now I'm pumping power and fluids into it. So let's put an energy cell into the um, conduits and it's going to start receiving energy. And let's put a portable tank connected to the um, fluid duct and it's going to start getting that the stabilized redstone. And finally let's put a strong box connected to the item duct and let's turn on the pumping of items here and it's going to start receiving the items. So that's the Tesseract. 
So that was the end of the episode and of the thermal expansion from Scratch series. I hope you enjoyed watching and see you next time.